So today I want to show you a few ideas you can try with the voltage sequencer from patchable devices, which is a sequencer with a modular way of thinking. So according to how you patch things, you will get different results, which might surprise you. There are other modules in this collection, but I'm saving them for future videos. So let's start with something basic and move on from there. So as you can see, we have two rows of eight steps each, right? And we have also various outputs that we can use. And we will start with output A, which will output the values, right? From the upper row, from row A. The voice I have here is dark energy going through prints of perception with some modulation going on, right? So in my case, I will use also a quantizer. So the output from A will go to the quantizer. This already goes to dark energy. And now I can manually select the different steps and then set the values, right? So let's say we'll do something like this. Right, maybe something like this. And now we just need a clock. Every clock multiplied by two. This will go to the clock input as you can see here. Maybe I will also just connect the reset just in case. Now we just need to turn this clock on. Right here we have the switch. And we have a simple eight step sequence. Right now let's set uh, row B. So I will just switch this to row B and then start switching or changing here the values a bit differently than what I did in, uh, in row A. Right, maybe something like this. Right, and now as you can see, we have here another clock input and switch. This is the vertical clock. And this clock will switch, right? It will switch between A and B. Right, uh, each time it receives a clock or a trigger. Right, so if for example I use here a clock division, I have here a clock division of four. Right, this will go to the vertical switch. And now again, I will turn this on. You can see here we have a, another output and it says A and B, and it's switching between the rows according to this clock division. Right, so if I use this output instead, Right, we get a longer sequence. Now instead of eight steps, we have basically 16. Right, so already we get something a bit more interesting. And of course, if you use a clock division of let's say three, for example, we will get even more variation because the sequences have eight steps. So the clock division will switch between them at different times, creating the illusion of even a longer sequence. Right, so instead of divided by four, I will change this to divided by three. Right, and you can see here it's switching between them according to the vertical clock, which is a clock division of three. Now here I have another voice. Right, in this case I have a multiplied clock, as you can see here, a multiplied clock switching between A and B. Right, and then a divided clock moving between the different steps. Right, so we get something of a different result in this case. I have here two VCV VCOs going through two um, filters, bandpass filters. There is also some delay to sound like this. This needs also a nice bass. I have here the phrase sequencer, sequencing the classic VCO. Again, a filter and a delay and a sub bass with a sign VCO from Bog Audio. Oh yeah. Now let's try and create something a bit more complex. I have here already an eight step sequence, 
right? I'm using A for pitch, B for modulation, the voice itself is again classic VCO going through a filter with an envelope on the filter and there is a delay also involved it will sound like this. Right, a simple eight step, repetitive eight step sequence. Right, so now first of all, let's make this sequence shorter. As you can see, each um, step has a dedicated trigger output. So we can use these outputs to trigger the reset function, for example, and get shorter sequences. So if I use step number six, right, this will reset the sequence. It will reset on step five, actually, and we have a five step sequence. Right now, there are also dedicated trigger inputs for each of the steps, so we can select also steps with triggers, right, and jump between the steps. So if I use, for example, step number five to jump to step number seven, right, every time it reaches step five, it will jump to step seven. Right, but we can add probability to this and add even more complexity. Here I have chances from count modular. This will add probability to incoming triggers. So if I send this trigger first to chances and then back to step number seven, now there is a chance that when the sequence reaches step five, it will jump to step seven. Right, we also have here again the direction input. This will change the direction of the sequence, so we can again use probability and trigger this, let's say, with step number eight. Again, this will go to another chances that I have here, and this will change the direction. Right, so as you can see, just by patching things together on the sequencer itself, we get so much movement and variation. I have here another sequence, right, in this case, it's sequencing um, Vesec, going through Nitros, right, some um, chorus, also a delay. Maybe we solo this for a second. Right, so first of all, I will use step eight to trigger the vertical clock, so to trigger the switch. As you can see here, I have it going from the AB switch to switch between the sequences and get a longer sequence. Right, but we can also use a clock divider to let events happen uh, after a few cycles. So for example, if I use step number five, this will go to the clock divider and I will use a division of four, for example, again, to change the direction. Right, after a few cycles, the direction will change. Right, and of course, we can have also, combine also a few uh, triggers for, let's say, accents. Right, I have here an envelope going uh, to the filter, to the nitrous filter. Right, so if I, for example, combine step one, just combine it with the VCV logic, and step four, let's say. Right now on these steps, the envelope will be triggered. And we have sorts of accents on the on the filter. Right, I have here also again a sub bass with a sine oscillator for Bog Audio. There are a few more outputs we can use for sequencing that might give you different results. For example, here I'm using once A and once B. I have here two VCV VCOs, right? So the A sequence and the B sequence. I'm mixing this with the Instruo a tri filter going through some chorus and delay, right? So this will be the A sequence. and then the B sequence. Right, and now what we have here, we have, for example, A minus B, right, and we have two logic or analog logic outputs, minimum and maximum. 
Right, but for now I will use the A minus B with another VCO that I have here. This will go to the quantizer first, and then I will bring it in. So we have chords. Very nice, we have three note chords now. Right, another thing we can try is switching between the outputs with a sequential switch. Right, so here I have the 8 to 1 switch from count modular, so I can switch between 8 sequences, sending them to one voice. So what I'm doing here, I have the A output, and then B, and then A again, and then A minus B, and then A, and then minimum, and then A, and then maximum, right? So I'm always going back to the A sequence, but then switching with the other sequences. In this case, it's sequencing two layers. I have here two FM operators as one layer, and then a classic VCO as another. Right, and you can see here how it's switching. Also here I will just add the bass. In this case, it's two modern VCOs. Right, and again a sub bass with a sine VCO. Oh yeah. a few more ideas you can try. So first of all, we have also the hold input that will basically pause the sequence. So you can use this to create one shot sequences, for example. Right here, the sequence is sequencing the FM operator going through some delay, right? And I can use the, let's say the trigger output of the eighth step, right? To trigger or to hold the sequence, right? So it reaches this step and then the sequence will just stop until we reset it. So here I have a clock division of four. Right, and then we have something a bit more complex, but of course also here we can use probability. Right, so instead of using the uh, step number eight to hold the sequence, I can use probability, uh, a gate with probability coming from chances. To get something again a bit more interesting. Okay, now we also have the preset input, right? This one here. Here I have a sequence with a twist VCO again, going through some delay. Right now the preset, when um, triggering the preset, it will jump to the last step you chose. So for example, if I click here and choose step two, right next time we trigger the preset, it will jump back to step three actually. So if I have here a clock division to trigger the preset, have a look here. Right, instead of uh, resetting like the reset to the first step, the preset will jump to the last step you chose. So if I choose, for example, step number five, it will jump to step six. Right, so this can also be quite interesting. Now you can also use this sequencer as a complex envelope generator. Right here I have again step eight holding the sequence, so we get a one-shot sequence. Right, and I'm using row A to control the filter that I have here. Right, so now I can either reset the sequence with the push module I have here. Right, and get a one-shot sequence. Or I can choose from which step to start from. Right, and if I add some slew to this, we get basically a complex envelope.
Right, and of course, my favorite is using it as an oscillator, right? All you have to do is use an audio rate clock source. In this case, I will use the VCV, VCO, the square output will go to the clock input of the sequencer. I will turn it on, right? And now let's say I will use output A as the first layer. Let's take it up, right? And now change here the values. This is now the actual... The actual waveform, as you can see here. Right, I can mix in output B, let's say. Right, this is now output B. With A or A minus B also. Oh yes, listen to this. Right, and that's it. As you can see, it's quite an inspiring module and I hope you will go and explore it some more. Thank you for watching. Cheers.